the guys who wanted to continue to keep working out and keep playing. Which and led you to, you had a quasi partnership with, um, with Sonny, or you guys were great, so, great so friends because you didn't start your um, ABC camp? ABC when camp? Um, um, I had Zenon Hamilton, um, Howie Goff and Control Sonny, because I didn't know Sonny at the time. I used to hear him on the radio and things like that. And Howie called me one day and said, Gary. You said radio. Yeah, radio. <laughs> oh How about that, huh? All right, go ahead. Sorry. Okay. And he said, how he said, Gary, there's a gentleman that's going to call you named Sonny Vacal. Have you ever heard of him? So, yes, I've heard of Sonny Vacal. Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. You know, anything else? You know, he saw Michael. And he said, well, he's going to call you. This is Sonny Vacal. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking the man's going to call me in a week or whenever. I'm not thinking of it. So, he said, he wants to do a camp. He wants to get you involved in a camp. I said, okay. I hang up the phone, phone golf, and literally was about to jump into the shower. Not even two minutes. Bling! Really? Phone's ringing. Gary Charles, Sonny McCall. I said, Mr. McCall, how are you? Mm -hmm. And he starts to outline something he wants to do. And he says to me, but I need to talk to you face to face. He said, you ever been in the Final Four? I said, no, sir, I haven't. Did you plan on coming? I said, no, I'm not. It's the last thing I'm thinking about going mm -hmm. to the Final Four. I need you to come out <coughs> so we can talk. So I go out to the Final Four. I get to the Final Four and I get to the coach's hotel. He said, I'm staying in the coach's hotel. Come in there. I walk in there, dude. Every college coach in America is in the hallway. Wait. Just, but they are there, right? Uh -huh. And I see John Thompson, who's like, oh my God. Uh -huh. John Thompson, I saw the biggest head I've ever seen. Uh -huh. I mean, he just like took up the whole room, so to speak. George Bradley was a coach back then. Mm -hmm. He wasn't with Nike at that time, he was a coach. At uh, USC. At USC. Right, right. It's packed. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what? I call Sonny on the, on the house phone. Uh, Mr. Vicar, I'm here. Uh -huh. Come on up to my room. Okay. I go into his room. His wife answers the phone. The door, Pam. One of the most beautiful women I've ever seen. I'm like, oh my God. And at one point, she used to do commercials. People want to know that there was a soap I used to that was called Palmolive. Uh, yeah, there was Palmolive yeah. soap. Uh -huh. So she used to do commercials for that. Anyway, she opened the door in a, a, a hotel room. Mm -hmm. And then here's Sonny. And I'm looking at him like, I just got to get this woman, uh -huh, you know? Uh -huh. But then he starts talking, and he breaks down his vision, and he says, are you with me? Okay. okay. And I look at him, and I looked at Pam. I looked at him, <laughs> and I looked at Pam. <laughs> and I say to myself, any man that can get this woman must know what he's doing. I mean... <laughs> True story. Yo, that's hilarious. I shake his hand, uh -huh. and he tells me, go ahead and get some uniforms. So I go into the convention center to go buy a uniform for the Panthers. He mm -hmm. said, you need to step your game up, is what we're about to do. And at the time, that's what I tell people, so, <clears throat> excuse me. So I sent Z to the camp, uh, ABCD camp, which was in California, mm -hmm. you know, at the time. And it was with Converse. See, the first two years when we did ABCD, it was Converse. Now, by the way, for the record, ABCD had been going on for years before that. He was with Nike. Uh -huh. But then when Nike let him go now, he's a free agent. Right. So he signed this two-year deal with Converse. And the funny thing is, I met the Final Four with my boy, Mickey Walker. Mm -hmm. now, remember now, Mickey Walker had Elton Brand before Riverside. Mm -hmm. he, had, he had Elton. Lamar actually went with him to France. They went to France with Jamal McClure, who people don't probably don't even know, but went to the NBA. And he's currently assistant coach with Toronto. Yep. Okay. He's actually so, a Toronto legend. Or he's a Canadian, Toronto, Canadian he's legend. He's a Canadian legend. Canadian, Canadian legend. So I go sit down with Mickey, and Mickey actually wants to just go with Converse. And he tells Converse, whatever I do, Gary's going to do, because Mickey and I were, we're boys. Mm -hmm. Mickey and I were the two guys who actually first started grassroots team traveling and playing against college teams back in those days. Okay? Mm -hmm. We were the ones. Mm -hmm. Mickey had the idea. But I had the connection. Uh -huh. So I would call the teams and we did those games. So but so Mickey and I used to do everything together. But that time I said, Mickey, I'm sorry, man, I'm going to I'm going to you understand? Your thing. Uh -huh. He didn't understand then, but now he did. He said, God damn it, I messed up. <laughs> <laughs> he knows back that. He's looking back at it, but he went cop. So so now we were Converse. Um But Converse was hot back then though. Dude. They was hot. Converse was hot. They they probably had one of the best super Ooh. teams up in Dorsey in the back. world. I was upset when Sonny <laughs> told me we're done. So now, in the middle of 
our second year, mm -hmm. he tells me we're doing a deal with Adidas. And he brings me out into my hat because I met Robert Schwarzer, who was not the Adidas guy. And he does me say, Robert, this guy is going to help us to go where we need to go. Uh -huh. like, you understand? I'm still naive. I don't know what this man is talking about. Uh -huh. But he, he is why he was so on me. I wasn't just a grassroots guy. I was working on Wall Street. Uh -huh. Okay? I was like, you know, I'm dressed. You know me. I don't get my suit on. Uh -huh. That's just who I was, right? And so he saw more in me. And I'm not even thinking about bad. So I'm thinking about making my money there. Okay? Now, listen. I'm about to say something. I'm not bragging. I'm just giving you facts. And I tell people sometimes, sometimes when you're giving out facts, you're not bragging. You're just giving out facts. Right. At um, 27 years old, I'm working on Wall Street. I'm already driving a Porsche. Mm -hmm. I'm, I had bought a house when I was 25 years old. Okay. I'm not thinking about bass at the time. I'm just trying to help out the youth center people, whatever. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm rolling. I'm uh -huh. doing my thing. Uh -huh. That's what Sonny saw. Okay. Here's a young man who's already doing his thing. So anyway, I meet, I meet this guy. But we have to do Converse the second year because we already had a deal right. for the shoe deal. Right. I mean, to go to camp with Converse. So here we are the second year in Ypsilanti, Michigan uh, for ABCD. Felipe was there, Paul Pierce. I remember I saw Paul working out. And I'm like, who is this kid over there? This kid was just so... Man, He's cool. polished at that age. And I even said, yo, this kid is the truth. He was that good. Uh -huh. He didn't know his name was going to end up being that. But he, that's, that's really what. Like, this kid is the truth. There were some players, you know, back then. I've never got. It was a kid. Um, I can't remember. Um, uh, what's my boy's name? My mom just went blank. Coach of Marquette right now. Uh, um, what? Uh, Wojciechowski. He was playing. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, who's this white kid over there? Mm -hmm. He was baller. He was good. Turned out to be Steve Wojciechowski. Mm -hmm. So I remember all of that because I was talking to uh, Rick Barnes about that because he ended up going. Uh, Rick Barnes recruiting him at Providence. At the time, and I remember, I saw some of Rick's guys, and I was like, "Hey guys, you need to look at this white kid over there. You're looking at all these guys. This this kid right here, Kapoor, uh -huh. turned out to be him, and obviously he ends up at Duke. Yeah. All right. Um, so anyway, so so that camp was that good um, at that time with a lot of ball players. So we did that, and now Sonny said, "I need you to help me get find other teams like you mm -hmm. with Adidas, okay, and." Um, give him a contract because I'm relying on you to make this thing happen. And I said, what's the goal? He said, the goal is to find a kid that we could sign for Adidas down the line. He said, but we're going to start from the grassroots. We can't get him from the NBA. Let's start Smart. from the grassroots. Smart. I said, okay. So basically, he laid the blueprint. I know everyone's seen the documentary. He's laid the blueprint for what's, what, what's going on now. What's going on now. For okay. Yep. He laid it, so he laid it out to me. And I said, okay. And I remember Adidas first came out with these sneakers. It was like damn boots. Kids hated them. In fact, I remember Wally's Irby, I didn't want to play them. Uh -huh. And back then, after Vegas, the other big tournament was a tournament in, in Ohio uh, by a guy named uh, Bobby Quartzen uh, in uh, Columbus, in Columbus, Ohio. So we used to go out there to his, to his event. Um, in fact, um, so Wally hated it. He didn't want to play with him, man. <laughs> so damn bulky. Uh -huh. you know, but that's how far Adidas had come. But I remember that. And um, the thing about back then, or even now, when you go to the event, if you're, if you're a coach uh, and your son's playing, you could still go to these events uh, during the dead period. Uh -huh. The dead period, fans, is when college coaches are not allowed to be there. We call that the dead period. Right. So... One of my closest friends, who was actually happened to be recruit one of my players, was at LaSalle, was Joe Bryant. Mm -hmm. So Joe Bryant was recruiting a kid from West Hampton named Ed Corbett, who actually ended up going to um, UNLV. I don't know that. Yep. So Eddie was about 6'7". He was recruiting him, and he was also looking at the time at Norris Bell, the Vars Bell older brother, mm -hmm. who could also jump out the, mm -hmm. off the roof. Mm -hmm. And then the more and more, you know, Joe and I were talking, he was say, hey, come see my son. Games, because we were in the same events. Uh -huh. And I remember this one particular event called, um, uh, it was called War in the Woods in South Jersey. Uh -huh. The games were played outside. Uh -huh. It's like you, you're driving in the middle of damn nowhere, and then you make a sharp left in the middle of the woods, and as you go a little bit further, half a mile, yip, you open up, there's three basketball courts, a house, you know, it's like, it's like, what the? Uh -huh. That's where the tournament was at. Uh -huh. So we're playing there. 
So I go over there to go watch young Kobe play. That's crazy. Okay? So and, what is he, like 13, 14? Nah, I mean, you know, he might have been 15, 15? at the time. Okay. You know, but I'm watching him, you know, play. And he said, watch my kid. I said, okay. Here's what's amazing about Kobe. I know, forget this. Kobe was an unreal kid. Kobe didn't care nothing about you. Kobe would be his mama. Mm -hmm. So Kobe makes a play. It's a dunk. So Joe hits me in my rib. You see that dunk? I said, yeah. But then Kobe comes across like this. You see that dunk? I said, yeah. I see the dunk. Mm -hmm. Come back down. Whap! Here's a jump shot. And Joe again hit me in my rib. You see that jump shot? I said, yeah. Here comes Kobe. You see that jump shot? Uh huh. I said, yeah, I saw the damn jump shot. I was watching the same game. I watched the same game you watched. But that's like Kobe. He was in that fire. Uh -huh. I'm like, damn, this kid. Boom. Uh -huh. But it wasn't. Like people ask me, how did you know he was going to be that guy? It wasn't just the way he played. It was his action and the way he talked to you. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, when Kobe, when we made the decision that Kobe was going to go to the draft, the next person next year was going to be Lamar. Mm -hmm. But as good as Lamar was, he wasn't mentally prepared to go. Okay? Mm -hmm. Kobe was. So now... One day, Sonny and I were talking, and he asked about Felipe, because Felipe is at St. John, and Sonny, Sonny's like, we got to you know, make sure Felipe is okay. I said, Sonny, I love my boy, but the next one is, is somebody else. He said, mm. who's that? I said, this kid named Kobe Bryant. He's like, what? Joe Bryant played in my game. Mm -hmm. Joe Bryant had played in Sonny's All-American game. I said, well, Sonny, that's the kid. He said, you sure? I said, I'm not going to bet my life, mm -hmm. but it's damn near it. Mm -hmm. I think that's the guy. Now. And, and this is what's important because now everybody think, eh, that's easy. No, it wasn't. Kevin Garnett had left. Prior to that, no guards had done it. It's not the way it is now. Right. Okay, it wasn't a normal thing. Okay, as a matter of fact, we knew people were going to kill us. So Joe and I, and Joe tells me, guess what? So one day Joe tells me, Kobe wants to do this. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, this is awesome. Joe, we're going to have to keep this quiet. Uh -huh. Because now, we don't want Nike to find out because we know Nike finds out it's over. It's over. So now I tell Sonny, and now it's like, we got to keep quiet. I don't even deal with Kobe at all. I'm dealing strictly with the dad and the mom. Uh -huh. And now it was Sonny and I, it was another gentleman by the name of Thad Fouché. It was the three of us. Thad Fouché is now the agent for uh, Russell Westbrook. Okay. But it was like us. We were like the you know three amigos, uh -huh. you know, so to speak. Okay. Everywhere you saw one, you saw the other two. And then Sonny said, okay, we're going to make this thing happen. And then, because Joe at one point said, the only thing Kobe was concerned about, or he was concerned about as a parent, he didn't want to mess this up. I said, what about if I give you a guarantee? He said, what guarantee? I said, what about if I gave you a deed of steal? He said, what do you mean? I said, then you got guaranteed money. Right. Then, you know, no matter what happened, he's going to be okay. Okay. So, but now we still got a year to do it. Right. Joe and I literally, I would drive to his house to have meetings. He would drive to my house. Uh -huh. Again, before cell phones, everyone. So the only time you could get people is if they were home. They were already here. So there were times he's trying to reach me. He can't get me. I'm not home. Matter of fact, there was one time he came to my house for a meeting. I totally forgot about it. And he can't get to me because right. there's no cell phone. Right, right. And I don't find this out for like a week later. Oh, shit. I said, <laughs> I said, God, what happened to me? I'm like, what meeting? He said, remember we had a meet last week? I'm like, oh, shoot. Uh -huh. I said, what'd you do for two hours? He said, I was counting your flowers. I was counting the color of your flowers. You know, we were joking. Mm -hmm. True story. So now we develop a plan, all right? So I'm telling you all of this here. See, it's history, okay? I need to take a test. So Sonny decides to move to uh, New York. But people think he's moving to New York for three months because of Lamar, that's coming up, yeah. and Felipe, who's at St. John. It wasn't. It was for Kobe. Mm -hmm. What we would do, Sonny and I and Thad, we would get in our car, my car, Drive to Villanova, go to the Villanova game. Steve Lapis, I think, was the coach. Mm -hmm. And Kerry Kittle was playing. Mm -hmm. Kerry Kittle played for Thad's grassroots team. Thad's team was from New Orleans, called the New Orleans Jazz. Okay. So we would go there, and in the auspices of, we went to go see Kerry Kittle play. Mm -hmm. Game is over. <laughs> shook his hand. Kobe lived five minutes away. Uh -huh. That was the real reason. That was the real reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we would go see Joe. Because uh -huh. we were trying to figure this thing out. And, you know, obviously it happened and the rest is, is history. But that's how that, you know, that happened. And that once we made that guarantee, 
that okay, then we we gonna go ahead and do this. That's a dope story. Okay, now let me tell you the That's next dope. step to that. Now this one I got second hand, so these in my uh, this isn't my word. I'm just telling you what I was told. Okay, when it happened, Phil Knight was like, "Who the blank mm -hmm. was able to get Kobe? How the blank did this happen?" Mm -hmm. And then people told him the relationship. Sonny had the grassroots teams. This guy, Gary, made it happen uh -huh. through the relationship. What do you think Phil Knight did then? Call Josh and let's get down together. <laughs> this is when the grassroots of EYBL of Nike started. Makes sense. Okay? And this is why, you know, Nico, who's one of the top guys over there, I remember a couple years ago I was like congratulating Nico. Mm -hmm. I was like, congratulations. I like Nico a lot. He said, no, thank you. And I looked at him like, why are you saying that? And he said, I know my history. Respect. Yeah, I appreciated that. Respect. Respect. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, no matter what you guys may think about whatever, man, you all need to shake Sonny McCall's hand anytime you see him because mm -hmm. that man helped create this whole grassroots landscape with EYBL, Under Armour, uh, Adidas, and pretty soon, Puma. All right? Because I'll be damned if Puma's going to sign all these guys and not do something about it. You're letting the okay? bag out. You're letting the hey, out the bag. I'm what, just giving you... You're letting the Puma out the yeah. bag. <laughs> Listen, like I told you, I'm a facts guy. Uh -huh. I'm not here to sugarcoat lie about, you know, about things. I'm just keeping it real. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, but the point though is, he created that world. And that's why I think that man does belong in the Hall of Fame. Okay? Because of all the things he did. He's also the first guy that gave college coaches shoe money. Mm -hmm. Yep. All the, a lot of those guys have gotten rich over there. Yep. Okay, respect that. Put some respect on that man's name when you say it. He created a whole lot for a whole lot of us. We're going to take a break on that one. <laughs>